Welcome to the Pimenia Alta Historical Society Museum in Nogales, Arizona. This is our building. It's, uh, it was designed by the a Tucson architect by the name of Henry Jastad and constructed by a local contractor by the name of Burton. This is the cornerstone which was put in. It's Santa Rita marble. Uh, and it's 1914. They began the building in 1914, the fire department did, because they needed a bigger space. But they ran out of money. And so the city eventually took over the building and then it became the city hall. So this is the original city hall building of Nogales. It was dedicated in uh, 1916 and was the city hall until 1980, when they built a new building up the road. We're a block from the international border between um, the United States and Mexico. So we're kind of at the hub of what is downtown Nogales. At one time, about 15 years ago, they told us this was one of 25 Seth Thomas clocks around the country, which was still operable. Um, it is still operable, although it's not operated right now, uh, because one of the problems is it needs to be wound every week exactly the same way, and that's kind of hard to do. So, But you can see that people have to get up there. A lot of the works are wood, not metal. So uh, dust is a huge problem. I showed you the cornerstone on the outside of the building. Behind the cornerstone, they buried a time capsule in 1915. And uh, at the centennial of the building, we opened the time capsule. It took a while to uh, find it because the time capsule is actually made of zinc. So it didn't show up with a metal detector. So in the end, we had to just chip away and uh, finally dragged it out. The things in it were packed so tightly that we had to get surgeon's um, tweezers and pull out one piece so that we, the rest of it would come out. As you can see, it's all in terrific shape. Nothing got damaged, nothing was hurt. The postcards look like they just came off the printer. And um, it's an amazing item to have been buried in the building for 100 years. This ranch cart was in use at a local ranch just right near the uh, city limits of Nogales until the 1950s. Um, it's the traditional buckboard, which we all saw in Western movies. And we use it here. We use the front part, the seat, um, to show off our museum bears because they celebrate most things like Easter and Fourth of July and all those kinds of things, Fifth of May. And then in behind it, we have a peddler's wagon where we have the books that we have for sale and shards from our clock and various items which we sell. So it's a shop and an exhibit at the same time. Right now, it's heavily decorated for 5th of May. And right over here, we have a very interesting um, exhibit, but it's not very well lighted because, frankly, we don't know how to light it. Um, this was ordered by a man who is an original sort of land developer in Nogales and Santa Cruz County. And he was building a hotel out by Rio Rico. And he ordered this to come all the way from Massachusetts. And it is birds and ducks. Um, that are in, uh, original to this area. And he had it in the lobby of his hotel. Unfortunately, the train didn't go there. So his hotel became a family home. And eventually, it came down, the piece came down through the family, and the family gave it to us for the museum. This exhibit is um, of the USS Arizona which seems like a sort of strange thing to have in Nogales. But uh, one of our early mayors was a man who lobbied the Navy Department to have one of the new battleships named Arizona, because Arizona 
had just become a state. So when the battleship was finally named, then he and a local lawyer headed the committee to raise the funds to buy the silver service, which goes on American ships of the line. And so there's a, quite a Nogales connection. The young lady who christened the ship many years later uh, married someone from Nogales and moved here. So that's why we have all this USS Arizona. This piece up here is a piece from the actual uh, ship. Um, the Navy Department uh, will um, respond to requests if it's by a nonprofit and if you promise to keep the, the piece as a, as a real relic and not just stashed away in a corner. Uh, so that is really why we have the whole exhibit. And we feel here in Nogales, World War II was very important, and so this is our way of, of acknowledging that importance. The model was actually made by somebody here in Nogales. The museum has been given two collections of regional costumes from all over the world, and we have decided that we will use this magnificent uh, piece of furniture, antique furniture, to display one costume at a time. So since 5th of May was not too long ago, this is uh, the China Poblana. This is the costume, um, the, the national costume of Mexico. And this is from those collections. Actually, the skirt is from one collection and the blouse is from another collection. These are works of art, really, even though they're meant to be worn. And uh, both of these pieces are almost 100 years old. This is our Ambos Nogales room. It is really focused on a Nogales, Mexico, Nogales, Sonora. Um, the wonderful Sarape piece with George Washington in it is uh, a piece that was um, ordered by an ex-president of Mexico many years ago and he gave it to the city of Nogales. His name was Álvaro Obregón. He was from Sonora, and he thought this was a wonderful way of showing the cooperation between the two countries. They gave it to the city in 1923. It's in wonderful shape. It is all wool, uh, a wonderful close weave. The color is a little off by this time, um, but the actual sarape is in wonderful shape. And of course, the sarape is a traditional Mexican piece of, uh, it's actually a garment. On this wall here is a wonderful uh, painting of the Virgin of Guadalupe. It was given to the museum by a family by the name of Barry who owned um, the Pete Kitchen Ranch. Pete Kitchen was one of the first Anglos to come to this part of, the, of Arizona. And he had a ranch right outside the city limits, which he managed to hold on to throughout the whole time during the Civil War when the American troops were removed. And he had a chapel, and this supposedly came from that chapel. It's been heavily damaged, it was probably yanked out of some kind of frame at some point, and it's actually burnt at the bottom. Um, but it's a wonderful piece, dates back probably to the 1700s. So it's quite a valuable piece for us. In this uh, exhibit case are some wonderful copies of old uh, prints, uh, which uh, were of the um, battle between the Mexicans and the French at Puebla which is actually what Cinco de Mayo is all about. So we used those during 5th of May just to kind of remind people what it was really all about. Those were given to us by a uh, previous consul of Mexico. This panoramic photograph is one of many that were taken by the U.S. Army when there was a very large military base here in Nogales. And they took them for border protection reasons. They were sent here to really keep the Mexican Revolution from spilling over into the United States. And they took the wonderful panoramic shots. 
This one happens to be mostly about Nogales, Sonora, which is why it's here. This is the old customs building, which had a clock ex exactly like ours. This is the original church here. You can see the railroad and the railroad station. And the border is right here, where there's a big ditch, which is now a street, of course. But in those days, it was a ditch. This is about 1916. This is the original city jail of Nogales, a very popular exhibit with children and other people who always like to have their pictures taken. Uh, this was the city jail. So this was where they picked up drunks and vagrants and nothing very exciting happened here. Um, it did, I hasten to add, have windows when it was a jail, but our air conditioning equipment is here, so it no longer has windows. It wasn't quite this much of a black hole of Calcutta. And the back faces onto um, another street, actually a parking lot. And when we were kids, we would go around and check and see who was in jail. Thought that was great fun. This is a clay um, Franklin stove, not metal, clay. Apparently, clay worked very well for heating up big spaces. And this is a replica of our historic museum building, which was uh, done as part of a summer program we had and um, in celebration of our centennial. Here is a vignette which was um, based on a photograph of a judge's office at the county courthouse. Um, the desk was given to us by the family of a mayor of Nogales, and we have filled it with items from our collection. Um, and this is pretty much what his office looked like. There's another ceramic stove. The photographs are of our county sheriffs from the beginning. Uh, Tom Turner, way up in the in the top corner, he was our first elected sheriff. And the story is told, I'm sure apocryphal, but that after his election, he went around with a pillowcase and took everybody's guns away from them in the bars. Because I guess Nogales was pretty notorious in those days. And he didn't want to have to deal with all that. On the other wall is a collection of our clocks um, they are mostly from, this is from the Western Union uh, office. The one above it with the two faces is a 30-day clock, which came out of the, one of the schools. And the other two are from uh, the courthouse and another school. This is uh, something new we're doing. Uh, this is to spotlight people who are not necessarily famous in Nogales but who have made ma major contributions to our life as a city. Uh, this uh, represents Ada Jones, who was a school teacher and later county recorder. She was married uh, to Charles Jones, who was a uh, border patrolman before they called them that. This painting is of her house. Her house was built by her father, who was a carpenter, and it's um, Carpenter Gothic. It's quite amazing, and it's still there. She played the piano. She also acted in amateur dramatics. She was very active in things like the Red Cross and um, those uh, activities. So, and she also wrote a lot. So we have her writings about her life in Nogales. We hope to continue to do this with other people who aren't as well known as they should be, we think. This photograph is an aerial photograph of Nogales taken in the 1950s. Um, it's an amazing photograph because you can certainly see differences now. Uh, you can see a multi-story building in about halfway, in about the middle of the photograph. That's the Fray Marcos de Nisa Hotel in Nogales, Sonora. And it is two blocks from uh, the international border which you can kind of see as a line right across. But if you look at Nogales, Sonora now, 
Most of those hills are covered with houses and buildings of all descriptions. Uh, Nogales, Arizona, on this side, what look what is a railroad um, yard is no longer. It is now a major shopping center. Uh, what is a, a sort of an open space uh, in down toward the right hand corner is the old high school. Uh, the high school, there's a new high school now, but this building, also 1915, is in use daily as the administrative center of the Nogales Unified School District, which I think is really wonderful because it means that old buildings don't just get tossed away. And down in the left-hand uh, corner, sort of where the railroad comes, uh, is a collection of buildings which have been replaced by a lovely library. That's kind of Nogales today. The rest of it is pretty much the way it is. <laughs> We've, we would like to have a, a new one so that we could see how big a change there's been. This desk uh, is from uh, the Customs and Immigration uh, Crossing at Lokeel which no longer is used as a border crossing. Um, it's an amazing piece of furniture because it gives you an idea of what it was like in the old days, and we're talking really old days, probably before World War II, uh, of what border crossing was like in the, uh, you know, not Ciudad Juarez and El Paso, but in the other border crossings. We display uh, this piece on top of the desk. Uh, this is an a copy, a photographic copy, of an original monument that was